Okay, welcome to the Lazy Cook Show, and it's Pete again. Um, and today we're going to do a, a minced lamb curry, or kima matter, and that's a minced lamb curry with peas. Um, and, I, and I'm using lamb lamb mince or ground lamb uh, for this recipe. Uh, on the side, I'm going to do, uh, and separately, I'm going to do a um, cucumber and mint raita, uh, which I'll put down on a separate video of course. Alright, so enjoy. Uh, and for the um, kima matter we've got the kima which is the mince which is the lamb, ground lamb meat uh, and there's about 500 grams there which is roughly about a pound of, of um, ground lamb. Um, we've got uh, two or three, around about three ice cubes worth of, of, of ginger. There's separate videos for ginger, onions and garlic. So look those up there on my channel. Uh, likewise with the curry powder, we've got some um, curry, homemade curry powder here. There's another video uh, on how to make that on my channel, so look that up. I've got six cloves of garlic. I've got um, a, f um, a medium hot uh, red chilli. That's more for colour than for anything else. And there's a, uh, here we've got um, about a tablespoon of tomato paste or tomato puree. Um, that's about, oh yeah, one other thing. I've got some uh, 300 mils of, 300 milliliters of uh, stock. Uh, that's beef stock I'm using, but any meat stock will do. If, you, if you're Hindu and you don't eat uh, beef, that you can use any meat stock. Okay, that's great. Um, the last thing we've got is the matter, which is the peas, and uh, I'm using frozen peas. They're just as good. I'm, I'm straight out of the freezer, and I'm using about a cup of peas. Okay, onwards and upwards. All right, let's get us on the uh, road on the show. Um, let's get the onion into the food processor, and the ginger into the food processor and the garlic into the food processor. Don't forget this is a lazy cook show so we've got to be lazy. And the next thing I want into the food processor is a couple of, couple of three heaped teaspoons of my homemade curry powder. And into that I think I'll just put a little squirt of oil because that helps lubricate everything as it goes around so that's about around about half to a tablespoon of oil in there. All right. Um, all we have to do now is give this a whiz and I'll spare you the noise of that. Okay, next up we're making a start on the um, on the kima. Top and tail that. Um, what I want to do is before I, before I chop this up uh, to go into the curry, what I'm gonna do is just cut off a couple of nice decorative slices. Um, just as a garnish and that just sits on the side as a garnish and the rest of this is mainly for colour and also a little bit of pecans, a little bit of flavour. If you don't like the heat take the seeds out but I love it because I'm like that. I like the spice you see and so does my brother. And um, that is why we like spicy food. <laughs> okay, right, moving on. Uh, I'll put that out of the way for a while. I won't need that straight away. And the next thing we need to do is get the, um, the mixed onions. So that's the onion, all ground up. And I'm just bringing my pan up to you and I'll get back to you as soon as that's hot. All right, that pan's coming up nicely to heat now. And into the uh, pan, I need about four, three or four tablespoons of oil, maybe just three, about three actually. And into that straight away goes the onion mix. You want a good strike heat, that's why we get the pan nice and hot. And as you, you'll hear that as, as it sizzles straight away as it hits the pan and messes up my sound characteristic. In it goes, don't waste anything. 
in, get all that flavour out there. That's where all the flavour be. Sink. Right, let's get that going. I think we're going to get Spoonzilla out to do this. Advantage of Spoonzilla is you can see what I'm doing. I'm stirring. So we'll get that going. And the rules with this is you just keep that moving. And I'm not going to waste your time with it because I've got to stand here for about seven minutes um, just keeping that going because it's on a quite high heat. Um, and that's by necessity because we want to get this starting to caramelise. And we, the only way we can do that without burning it is to keep it moving. So we keep it moving on the pan. So we need that caramelization and we don't need to burn it. So I'll get back to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, we're a couple of further minutes, uh, a couple of minutes further on than last time. And um, I'm just keeping stirring it over the heat. I've added a little bit more oil, just a little bit. Um, and keeping it going. If you've never had this curry before, if you've never had uh, a, a minced uh, minced meat and peas curry before, if you've never had this delicious dish before, you really got to check this out. You've got to give it a try. It's superb. It's one of um, it's one of the great comfort foods. Um, as before, when I cook curry before, the, the, there's, there's a, a couple of other recipes I've done for curry. And in each case, I'm trying to get the caramelization of this onion, garlic, and ginger. I'm trying to get that to caramelize. When it does, there's no mistake in it because you get this wonderful smell that starts to come off it. it you stop smelling the rawness of the spices and you start smelling this lovely, oh, what's the word for it? It, anyway, you, you you won't miss it when you smell it. It's a great smell, and it's really that change that signals the next uh, stage in the process. Uh, and it will also darken, uh, depending on what spices you've got in there, but it will generally darken a, a, a shade or two uh, from when you started. And that's uh, as the sugars start to brown and uh, as they're coming out of the onions and the garlic and the ginger. And, onions and garlic are particularly quite high in sugar in, in themselves. Um, that's coming down to the right uh, to start to look right now and as you see uh, it's stopped boiling. Uh, let me get you close up on that. Okay there's your close up and you'll see it's now starting to catch just slightly on the bottom and this is why we have to keep it moving. And then it's at this stage that I take the meat and we put the meat in. So, oops, that's got a bit of paper on the back of it. I hate it when we do that. There you go. No doubt it keeps the um, meat fresh. But you don't want that in your food, right? And then the next thing we've got to do is start to break up the clumps. That's a fabulous smell. Oh, lovely smell. This is rather nice lean lamb. You don't want it too fatty for this dish. And the uh, ground lamb generally comes from the um, shoulder of the lamb. So it does contain a certain amount of fat. If you're really concerned about the fat, you fry off the lamb separately and then you pour off the fat and then you add the lamb after. Uh, it's not quite as good as using this method because what you're trying to do is fry that flavour into the lamb as you go but if you're extracting the fat first um, you won't you won't be able to do that. It'll just go in later. Although I've tried both ways and um, there's not, there's not a huge amount of difference. Okay, we've compressed a bit of time there for you. And as you see, the meat is starting to brown nicely. And it's at this point I can start adding, um, first of all, in goes the 
tomato paste, tomato puree. In goes the chilies. Now I've cut them into fairly large chunks. You cut them off how you like. Once that's in, you get it stirred in. Then in can go the peas. They'll reduce the temperature a fair bit. But that's not important now because we've got the meat brown in already. And in can go the stock. Give that a last stir. There we go. And then we bring that back up to the boil. As you can see, it's quite a colourful dish, quite, quite a, a nice looking colourful dish. We let that come back up to the boil. And again, this will thicken. It will thicken naturally because of the onion and the garlic and the ginger. Um, and also it will reduce slightly. And you've now got to get this till it looks like a bit like your more familiar mince and tatties. <laughs> and another good thing about lamb is it cooks uh, faster than beef and it, it, it is generally more tender than the cuts of beef which are used for, for ground beef. Um, and now you see it's coming back to the boil. Nice dish with a little flecks of red and green in it. It's quite a presentable dish. Now it's coming up to the boil. I'm going to turn that down, heat down to medium. So um, on the scale of one to six, I've turned it down to four. So uh, I've turned it down about a third and I'm just going to let that now cook for a while as it is and reduce a little and I'll get back to you. Okay, that's reducing nicely now. Um, and it's, as you see, it's starting to boil rather aggressively. So I'm going to turn that down now um, and let that cook for a while. Um, at this point, I'm just going to have a quick taste of things to see how we're doing. Mm. It's very important to taste your food so, so you know exactly where you are. Um, it's really delicious. It's, it's, it's uh, meaty as you could imagine. Um, the lamb needs to cook a little more. There is a sweetness from the peas and from the caramelised onion. Uh, it does need a little bit more salt. I'm going to grind some more salt into it. And I also want to put in a bit of my um, black pepper because I'm a nut for black pepper as anyone who watches my videos knows. Um, I'll probably put a bit of that on just before I serve it to myself as well. So that's now turned down. Um, you can serve it more or less from this point on depending how thick you like it but I'm, I'm just going to let that cook down a little more and let it tenderise the lamb a little bit more uh, although the lamb is nice and chewy and edible now but I'm just going to let that go a little bit more tender because I'm in a comfort food mood tonight and just let that cook down just a wee bit more so I'll turn that down to uh, on a scale of one to six I've turned it down to two so it's down another third and the next thing you'll see is that plated up and there it is all plated up on some uh, jira rice and ready to go well I'll let you have a last long in look at that and then I'm going to take it to my brother because he's hungry. Enjoy. I hope you enjoy the curry. Um, and this is just a little end note to say that I dedicate this video and indeed all my videos to those I know and love and to those I love but don't know. <laughs>